Hey, welcome back Design Squad. And in this video, we're gonna step up a little bit. It's kind of like a continuation from a previous video. If you remember, we are talking about repeaters and how to transfer different repeater options from one repeater to the other like so. So let's say this is one repeater, this is a second one, and I can just click and add all that information to this new repeater. And that's really easy to do on the same page. Now, it's a bit more tricky if we want to go and do that throughout the pages or across the pages. And I got this comment and request by one of the viewers and it basically states, hey, how can I use maybe variables or something else of how to make it happen? And this is exactly what we're going to use. Now, I replied to a comment saying that you are going to have to have a variable for each of the items and if let's say you want to transfer multiple repeater items to the next page, you know, you're going to probably need to create a variable for each and every item. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so forth. It's going to be like, I don't know, maybe like 60, 70 of global variables. If you really want to transfer every single item from here, because it's expansive, basically. So my recommendation would be either to stick to text items, which I have a video already of how to transfer a global variable and load it in a new page. That's an easy way to do. So go back a few videos uh, about the logging, about the theming. I think there was a lot of different global variable type of iterations. It's easy to transfer, you know, minimal values. However, your request is purely about repeaters. So I'm going to show you how to transfer one value. And if you want to transfer more values, you're just going to have to scale it and add more global variables, more possibilities and so forth and account exactly of how many of those new triggers you might have. Without further ado, without, you know, fluffing too much, let's jump into it and I'm going to show you how to do it to variables. So my page is quite simple right now. I have this, these two repeaters, as you can see, one is to promote list, one is to have a simple list of the of the things and I'm going to keep the same exact repeaters across the pages. The only difference is that I'm just going to make a copy of a page and I'm just going to duplicate it really quickly. And I'm also going to make a child page underneath where it's like the result, let's say. So the data we're going to transfer and I'm just going to probably copy these across to the new page like so. Imagine that this is our use case and we want this to be done. I'm going to quickly also copy the styling. Boom. So I set it up. If you want to really do from repeater to repeater, remember to view the previous video where I explain exactly the structure where you are going to want to have exactly the same amount of columns in your repeater in those tables with a unique name. So let's say this is CNAME promo in a promotion list, but in the previous page, I have this C name only instead of promo, but I have exactly what would match. So you provide the templates in the next page so it actually fits. Now, next thing what I would need to do is to define global uh, variables. So if you go to your project, global variables, you're gonna see that I don't have any in this prototype yet, and I'm gonna start creating. So one is definitely gonna be, let's say, a repeater name. And by default, this might be empty then it's going to be repeater title. You can name it as you wish. You know, the convention is yours as long as you remember exactly what you have. And then repeater team. Lastly, um, let's say staff ID, repeater staff ID, right? They're empty. And now imagine if you would have multiples, you would want to probably say maybe repeater one, then, you know, two and stuff like that. So you make copies of all of these but your prototype is going to become like a massive list of variables. It's up to you what you want to do, though. Um, the idea and logic still is valid enough. So once that's done and you set up your global variables, next thing what we want to do is really just to go into a repeater. And I have this button, which is basically any call to action you want to transfer the data with. And I'm just going to click in to find my interactions. And as you can see on click or tap, this is a new actual iteration. So now it has click or tab by the way. I have this which switches the state of this into a clicked. And I also have the add rows in the next repeater, which is actually not correct right now. I just need to remove this all is redundant and just go back really quick into my button 
as you can see, I have a warning now. All I need to do is to delete it and just click and say set variable value, find that statement. And here I'm going to have my variables defined so I can do like, let's say, repeater, name, value, X, Y, Z. And here is the interesting bit. So I can just go into functions. And as before, just select insert variable or function and find my item C name. So a value of a C name of that bad boy is going to be assigned to the variable. And then I can literally just either add more targets. So like title function, boom, title is a role. Okay. Click one more and then another target, which is team. Go back into function, find the team as well. See team as you can see. And then do one more, the last one for staff ID, just not to leave, leave out anything. Boom, boom, boom. And we have uh, four different items. So now once I click, it's going to be added to global variables. And now it's ready to be viewed in the next page. And so let me demonstrate exactly how it works. You're not going to see much, but just to explain. Let's say if I click jo John Smith, creative lead in experience design team, I click promote. Now it's all going to be added in my list of the repeaters. Let me actually do that again. So you see exactly the pages. Let's say like this, John Smith is promoted. But if I go to the next page, nothing is added because we haven't told the new page that something has to be added. And that's a critical piece, basically. So I'm going to go back into my new page. And here, as you can see, I have repeater defined. However, since my data set is empty by default, uh, nothing is going to be displayed on load. As you can see, it's it's loading. If I would add something into data set, it would just preload a half of statements ready. And you should too, based on the previous video, if you haven't watched, watch it or go even back if repeaters don't make sense at this point go back a notch. There are so many, I think I have maybe five videos just on repeaters, different use cases, explore it and learn bit by bit. And you're then going to understand how powerful this is in UX prototyping. Cool. And so once that is, you know, all set up, I'm going to add a new interaction, deselect everything. Now I got, get a lot of comments saying, Hey, how do I add action X to this object or that object? And there is no interaction which you are stating. Chances are that you are not clicking on the right object. So as you can see, I deselected everything. It's out of canvas. I can I'm not clicking anything, any objects. Here you're gonna go new interaction and find on page load or page loaded depends on actual version. In a new actual just got an update, it's page loaded now instead of page load. So I'm gonna select that and we're telling once it's load Let's read those variable values and then push it into a repeater, right? I'm going to go ahead and then select go to repeater. And as you can see, if you remember from my previous, there is add rows, click add rows, click that to promote list we have here, confirm it. And here is where the magic is going to happen because we're going to have to define exactly what is the value. So click on function, insert variable or function. And all you have to do is select name for the first name promo, then role is going to be title variable, then team is going to be team, then, then ID of the employee is going to be staff ID. So I'm just assigning the global variable values to these columns. Click OK, click OK, and boom, that's all set up. If I would just load this page, and I haven't selected anything in the previous, nothing is going to be selected. As you can see, empty values got pushed. However, if I go back to the repeater here, the one we've just set up and I'm going to promote, let's say myself and go to results, you're going to see that now that page after loading displays me. Boom. That's all it is. That's simple as that. It's quite amazing, quite simple. But all you have to do is really just to set up that trigger, capture those values into global variables, and then on load, read it and push it into your repeater. That's it. As mentioned before, if you want to make multiple entries, you have to scale it. You have to have as many global variables as you want textual values to be displayed. 
you can't just have, let's say, one row of repeater to be displayed in global variable. You probably can if you want to slice it, but that's very complex scenario where you then have to detect exactly if there's a coma, you know, through JavaScript logic and stuff and then slice it and then put it into different objects. But it's way too much of an overkill for just UX prototype. And so this shows the fundamentals. As always, I welcome you to explore and experiment. I hope it's useful. Smash that like button, smash that subscription button, smash some sort of bell button. I have no idea what that is, but just do that. And I'll see you next time.